Good morning once again, Matthew. We're in week four of our walk round Hyas Farm, and in a moment or two, we're about to turn in a southerly direction, which means we're getting close to the halfway point. <laughs> we're still on Hallback Lane, uh, Arming Hall Church, just through the trees there. I can just see the square flint tower just through the trees and the track is still really good nice and wide three four five people can walk abreast along here and there's rat on his lead leading the way and this is one of the delights of high ash farm just here look at this tree yeah it's just a tree and it goes up and up and up and an enormous canopy but this is no ordinary tree it's a mature elm and it's completely unaffected to this day with Dutch elm disease and all around me there's lots of elm suckers some of which have Dutch elm disease where you see back there the bark flaking off the bottom of some of them uh, they've succumbed and for some magic reason this one's right by the track and um, it's big enough to not be able to get your arms around okay let's do a bit of tree hugging let's see oh and i can't even get halfway around but if it lives another 50 to 60 years which fingers crossed it will um it will make a magnificent elm i mean constable would love painting this if we could get him back i'm sure it's stunning there are two or three species of elms and it does get a little bit confusing identifying them there's the good old common or english elm and then there's one with all the twisted bark which is witch elm and then there's a whole raft of hybrids because sometimes they'll cross and cross with different uh, other elms and so they are quite difficult to get a firm identification on so here we are tracks lovely and wide here some teasels oxide daisy each side of the track where I hand spray walk through here after I'd cleared this track it was a monumental task it took me about two and a half three weeks to clear it with the help from the ramblers thank you very much I'll just turn back because this brings oh tugged the lead a bit too hard <laughs> rat was going one way I was going the other <laughs> the master's always right and this lovely oak here it's about six feet through the trunk that's the, across the base and it's probably about 20 feet something like that at five feet above ground level but it kind of had an accident with nature 50 odd years ago and you can still see the scar all the way up the trunk I'm just putting the camera up and the center of the tree is actually dead and that scar goes right up to the crown and it's a lightning strike and it really did a huge amount of damage to the living tree but it's tried to grow over I'll get the camera quite close grow over the scar and there's about eight inches thick of extra growth and gradually that scar will be healed over and in future generations somebody will come to fell the tree and i'm sure there'll be some strange words said because the middle of it will be quite rotten <laughs> so here we are one of the high spots of high ash farm we're getting close to 70 meters above sea level and we're about to turn right we're still on Boudicca way that comes along the north edge of high ash farm and then heads down the eastern edge of high ash farm and there we are a nice new public footpath sign and there it is it says Boudicca way with a big finger arrow pointing the direction that we're now going there we are what a lovely sight is that one of the valleys and one of the hills of high ash farm and a panoramic view sun low in the sky and right on the far side of the valley a tiny little white dot in the distance there is the keeper's cottage for the farm on the other side of the hill which meant the gamekeeper way back in the late 1800s and early 1900s who resided in there uh, could actually keep a complete close eye on all his pheasants hello we've got trouble now <laughs> hello <laughs> rats eyeing up lunch 
<laughs> which is a small sausage dog. <laughs> dear, oh dear. And here's a lovely little seat. Um, and this one has got a memorial plaque on it. Let's just see what it says. Right, Carbrook Silver Sapphire, also called Saffy, 1992 to 2020. Up this six furlongs she would go without a care and no horse in tow. Uh, for 11 years, High Ash was her home, so in the bluebells she also now roams. Rest in peace now, Safi. Thank you for giving me the wings I never had, and that's from her owner. <laughs> How lovely, almost tearful that. And so here we go, heading southwards, Boudicca Way on the eastern side of Hyash Farm, 10 metre wide grass track, all mown, and this is easy walking. In the summer, it's a delight. This is a south facing heavy boulder clay. We're still in the village of Arming Hall. And lots and lots of people on the far side of the farm. I can see on the other valley there, three or four people. Oh, buzzard way up high, skirting across the sky. Fantastic. Lots of lovely wildflowers here in the summer. And if you're really lucky, uh, you can see yellow butterflies, blue butterflies, red butterflies, all the colours, <laughs> and some interesting colonial day-flying moths as well, all on the knapweed, clover, sandfoin, all the different pollen and nectar plants. It's great fun to come. we have got children in June, July time for them to be able to identify. All you need is a little butterfly book of the common species and you'll be amazed and they are incredibly beautiful as I said easy walking downhill no huffing and puffing from the local farmer this morning and down at the bottom of the valley to break up these former large arable fields uh, and yet another one of the newly planted hedges at Hyash Farm that's about the one in front of us is about 200 metres long and it joins a whole succession of other newly planted hedges uh, all over this area of the farm on this clay to break up the fields and of course form wildlife corridors, windbreaks and brilliant home on the little banks where the tussock of grass is for birds like nesting yellowhammers, small rodents, small mammals, all sorts. And this is an old hedgerow mark across the field. You can just see where in the 1970s, under a government grant scheme, some of the old hedges were grubbed out. Many of them uh, were consisting of scrub elm. And during that time, a lot of the elms were completely dead. And so large bonfires were made. Um, I was known as Attila the Hun in the village. <laughs> After I'd finished harvest, you just go around and did all the baling with a box of Swan Vestas matches. <laughs> Other match varieties are available, uh, and that was the era of stubble burning. And uh, it's a quick way of getting rid of the, the straw and making weed seeds germinate. So they have this wonderful hedge, whole mixture of British native plants including blackthorn which begins the hedge and I can already see lots of little blackthorn suckers coming up in the field it's one of those notorious hedging plants Prunus spinosa that uh, tries to have a bigger footprint than you gave it to start with but great for nesting birds because it forms dense scrub as well give it half a chance lovely old mature hedge on my left and this field, called Arming Hall Field, is an incredible sight in late summer, in sort of July, August, and even into September. And it's a fantastic spot for bee orchids. We had well over a thousand bee orchids growing very close to the edge of this track on this heavy boulder clay. Somebody walking down. Now coming past us. Hello. There we are. 
getting up to the top of the hill on the valley and this is where we'll stop today's walk because I've got a date this evening in Norwich lots of birds I'm going to visit the Starling Murmuration just off Hall Road five o'clock I'll be there so got to get a day's work in on the farm yet Red slow down a bit he's trying to pull me up the hill <laughs> I don't mind that at all and here we are just coming up to the spot where we'll see this morning's walk right on top of a hill another hill so we've been down a valley up another hill and I'm doing about four miles an hour walking give you an idea so good brisk pace in this seat I can see big numbers on the side of it 2005 it's made of cast iron and the view from this seat has given almost given the feel behind me a name and I'm going to read out the little plot in brass on the side of the seat in loving memory of Dawn Victoria Hill 1939 to 2004 who loved these footpaths right sit down Christopher turn the camera around and look at this and I'm very tempted to call this hill Dawn Hill after Dawn Hill it's a stunning view beehives in the distance woodcock wood over there small four acre cops and an extra acre of new woodland planted on the eastern side of it and one of the lovely double hedges at high ash one of those hedges there is 400 years old and the one beside it almost as tall because <laughs> it's had this head chopped off is only about 15 years old so there we are i'm sitting on dawn hill Norwich in the distance there, way over. It's a panoramic view of a good chunk of Norfolk and a good quarter of High Ash Farm. Lovely place to finish this morning's walk. <laughs>